Hi guys, nice to see you back, see you speaking again. Last time we were dealing with the 7 segment display 0.8 inches high. It was a relatively simple task. I want you to be ready and I'm preparing you today for the next one which is much bigger in size, which is this one here. This is 2.3 inches size. A display 2.3 inches size and it's not only this is the fact that instead of having only 8 segments it's going to have 16 segments so yes I'd like you to know what we expect from that in this way I'm gonna show you projects containing one digit actually one display two displays three displays four displays and even five to understand how far can you go with that let's start with a simple one this in itself, it's an amazing project. This is a uh, uh, project com coming from Speak and Z Lab, only this one here. Here is the microcontroller, and here is the original digit, a small one, 0 0.8 inches size, exactly like the one we used together, but having 16 segments instead of seven. And what I wanted, I wanted to better see what happens here. So I managed to expand the project and to connect it to a bigger digit, this one we're going to use together. Obviously, whatever you see on the little display over here, you're going to see on the bigger one. So attaching a uh, telegraphic key to the project, the microcontroller itself, it contains all the codes, all the electronic codes for the Morse code equivalent of the characters, letters and numbers. Yes, this is what's going to happen with the display. Not only is going to be able to display the numbers, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 9, but also the most of the letters of the English alphabet. So attaching the uh, telegraphic key, depending on what you type. This is the letter S, for instance. Remember the famous SOS is the S, is the O. So it was the other S if you are typing three dots. So this is supposed to recognize the characters you type by using the dots and the dashes in the Morse code and displaying them over here. So if I'm displaying the letter K, like here, is because I want to display the letter K. But if I want to display, let's say, the numbers, I have this for zero, I have this for one, I have this, sorry, let's do this again, I have this for two, I have this for three. So I have this for four, L5 and so on. So by knowing what to type, if you do a mistake, the microcontroller is going to recognize right away is not exactly the good character. So it's displaying this to you, allowing you to correct mistakes and learning how to use the Morse code. Surely it's not much in use today, but for me it's not a purpose. The purpose is just to play with a new kind of display. So this is what it does only with one display. You can display any letter, any number you want. Then we pass to another one. It's actually a project you know with two displays. This one, I have three videos about it is the famous uh, uh, project counting people with the two sensors over here. And I just, if I want just to do a simulation, I'm going to pass the paper sheet in front of it. So then the numbers, they change. This time, I force the display to only simulate or mimic the seven segments. So you won't see here funny characters, but only the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 9. And 
This one is a spare I have for the display inside. Yes, the project is a bit more complicated because not only it has the logic in the box, but it also has a second display on the other side. So it can be seen. It can be seen from both directions, from the, from the front and from the back at the same time. Okay? So this is containing two digits. Now I'm moving over here. I'm moving over here, or I use the same spare as this one, is right here, but for two distinctive projects, actually using each of them one digit. And right here in the bottom is a small 0.56 inches, and exactly what's there I can display on the bigger one. And here is a big digit, and this is a small one, and I even have an intelligent uh, digit from uh, Texas Instruments. And here, that's another nice project. This one only displays is the top side of the uh, uh, breadboard. If I press, it's going to display, let's call randomly right now, any number between one to six electronic dice. We're gonna build that kind of project later on when we become comfortable with the displays. So as you can see, any number displayed here is between one to six, no zero, no seven, no eight, no nine, okay? This one in the bottom though, it displays any digit from zero to nine. Take a look, right now is a zero, and you can see it on all the displays. The intelligent one, this is 0.3 inches size, the 0.56 inches, and the 2.3 inches, which now, being exactly like the one for the counter, I forced it to only show the numbers, the digits, and not the letters. So any numbers between zero to nine, okay? So one to six, zero to nine. So I use the same display as before on two digits, but for two distinctive projects. And now I'm going to move over the one having three digits. This one here. This one here, if I put it on, It's going to be able to count one time per second up to seven minutes but because it's too long it's a very is a special application i've made because it's too long uh, i have here a jumper over here where i can uh, change the pace of the counting so now it's counting 10 times higher or 10 times faster just to reach the number seven uh, uh, for the seven minutes a bit faster but the thing about it is three digits because I just want to count up to six minutes and 59 seconds. Just watch. And now it stops and the lights are blinking all the time, waiting for a new command. So if in the meantime, I'm going to remove the jumper and to move it, and when I press the button, it's going to count like we expect the seconds one by one, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and so on, up to seven minutes. So we leave it away. This was an application made for three digits. And now we go for one having four digits, four displays. This is a, a number I can even display fancy characters, like the zero here, like the zero here has a dash over it, to make the distinction between the letter O and the number zero. And the five is looking a bit different to make the distinction between the S and the number five, okay? And there's more about it. Remember that uh, you were able to actually change the numbers. Let's just do this with the same uh, uh, mini dip switches we used last time. For instance, if I just do that, you can already see it's a three, but now it's the three to show exactly like this one here. So very easy to change the numbers depending how many uh, such uh, seven, uh, so, how many such uh, switches you have available. Okay, so this can show a number. Okay, it's a project almost identical to one I've done for one of my friends, 
having a, a specific number of four digits, okay? So you can display any number you want between 0000 and 9999. This is an application on four digits. And now we're going to, oh, before I go for another one, yes, on the seven segment displays we used before, this is the project from the last week. I can also display some letters, but not all the letters. So there are only a couple I can use. Like for instance, I have a tool I'm using for many years where the, uh, this is the logic probe, where instead of showing the zero and the one for the uh, logic, when I touch, let's say anything related to the passive, it, it shows me the letter H from high, high level. When I'm touching the ground, for instance, it shows me the letter L from low. And when it shows me a, a zero, it is the limbo state, okay? For me, this is a logic probe. So it's working so well for so long, but I'm using it in such a way that it shows me on a little 0.3 inches display, the logic states of what I measure, okay? But again, exactly like, exactly like this one here, it is only capable to show a couple of letters, not too many, because in order to show a lot of letters in the English alphabet, or to do this kind of thing, to make the distinction between the zero and the letter O with the dash, you need a 16, seven, uh, 16 segment display, okay? Or even change the aspect of the number five. Now we're going to move to show you an application even for five such displays. I have it right here. That's another amazing application. That's a clock. So it shows the date because again, I'm gonna show you soon, it has a microcontroller inside. So it has all the calendar and it switches, if you uh, allow that option, between the current time and the current date. As you can see, at the same time on some displays, you can show letters like here. On some others, you can show only numbers like here. Let me just open this for you. You won't take too long. It's only to remove two screws. One here. And another one here. Just to show you how are they related. These You see, these are the actual displays and all of them are actually connected on sockets right here. And on the back of the same card, here you have the main parts. So here is the microcontroller, the basic microcontroller. And this one, if I just remove, take a look at the date, take a look at the time, I just remove the power, see? So guess what? is not going to lose, is not going to lose the information, the time or the date, simply because we have here this round module, which is plugged over here on the main board. This is called the real-time clock, RTC, real-time clock. And it has the famous uh, CR2032 battery here inside. And that's how it memorizes, it recalls the information, so the information uh, is not lost. So I plug it back and take a look. It does the test, hello world, you know that message from programming. And it's the same time, 1934, and the same date as before, it didn't lose it. But it's not it's the point. It's not the point to see how many components are here. There are a lot of them and you can even recognize some of the parts we used together, which are the network resistors network resistors. So plenty of integrated circuits, network resistors, the digits are on the other side placed on sockets, okay? And this is what we're focusing on. This application is for one, two, three, four, five displays. So again, short conclusion about it. Short conclusion about it, we used, we can use applications for one digit, two digits or two displays, 
three displays, four displays, five displays. And if you can imagine it, applications having more than that, be my guest. So stay tuned because next week we're gonna start wiring this kind. Remember, this is the kind of display we need. Thank you very much. See you next time.